we know the uh, right age now, of this so footage? Zero. Same room, same butcher boy, B16, bandsaw. Poundage of meat here, maybe 5% of what we offer oh. now. And I kept slicing and I actually just sliced the side of my finger off. Mm. Just a lot of emotions when you see this because it was tough work and it was tough financially back in those days. Uh, working the kill floor, I had my teeth busted out. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. 12 hours solid without a break. No lunch, no nothing. I kept just pushing on it, pushing on it. Finally, it just like pus shot out of all the stitches and just something interesting right there. You just cut through the skirt stake, right through the skirt stake. Nobody knew what it was. I remember him coming in the front door of our store and pounding his fist on the counter and he was pointing at me and said, I thought I told you five eights. Over and over, over and, and over, over, and over and hundreds over. of pounds. Yep, every same day. Same repetitive type work. Welcome back to another episode of the Bearded Butchers broadcast. Today, Spencer has a special treat for us, special treat for you, the viewer. Uh, Spencer's dug up some old footage from our butchering through the years. So some of this stuff we've seen and forgot about, some of it we may have never seen. And I'm certain that you, the viewer, has never seen. So it'll be an interesting look into our butchering past and we're going to go over the footage. You get to see it, you get to see kind of our reaction to it. Maybe some stories will pop out of it, stuff that we we remember just by looking at the footage. This is gonna be a pretty cool one because little did we know that we were gonna be uh, in front of a camera 20 years ago and it was gonna result in uh, you know, what we're doing today. So yeah, at know, the maybe, time maybe was... you can say that it came natural to us. So even dad, he picked up a camera, you know, 20 years ago and started filming a bunch of footage with this old rickety camera. He didn't know what he was doing. He just started capturing content. Um, and we're here to show it to you today. It's pretty cool. Let's get started. Yeah. So you're looking at the familiar backdrop that you see in all of our YouTube videos. Not much has changed there. Seth here in the background at the uh, breaking station. There's Sean at the boning table. Big pile of meat in front of him. I don't know where Scott is, though. Oh, Scott used to slip off the boning table every once in a while. There's the old scale. Sean and I would make uh, jokes about chaining his ankle to the corner of the Hey, Feather Meats. Hey, Sean. Look up here. Hey, no, let me see your face here. Hey, how you doing there, buddy? How you doing, Seth? See? Uh, 20 years ago, he didn't like it. Did you just did you just bend over to pretend you were mooning the camera? Go back. Hey, Feather Meats. Hey, Sean. Yeah, that's good. Look up here. Hey, Watch. no, let me see your face here. Watch. Hey, how you doing there, buddy? How you doing, Seth? Huh? He's, he's shaking look, his look head. Yep. <laughs> this is a beef. A oh, junky beef. Lousy beef. Oh, I won't yeah. mention the customer's name because that'll get us in trouble with him. But this is Sean Perkins. He is quality control manager in charge of our HACCP program. Just about everything else, putting up with everything from the inspectors. This is Seth Perkins right here. He's the head meat cutter. He's the man who cuts it up, puts it in the package. Hey, Seth. Man. Front and center. How you doing there, buddy? All right. Front and huh? center. Peace there, brother. We used to hear that all the so time. So that's the meat saw. The beef comes out of that little cooler right there. And like I said, this guy right here, Sean Perkins, he is the meat or the meat boner here. Fred? And in charge, yeah. It may seem Fred. This is Fred right here. So this oh, is our I processing am. floor. And as you can see, the meat gets cut up and put here, but Stacy's not there. That's her job. That's her cuber. And she does her work on. This is our grinder, and hey, looky here. There's the burger girl. How you doing, bunny? This is the girl who does the burger. And she and Stacy put it in the packages after it's ground in this grounder and after it's run through the bulker here. This is the patty machine. This is where Sarah and Mom spend a lot of time. So this is white feather meats of the plant. We have a customer pulling. So we... Man. We still didn't. We didn't. I heard myself say, "Where's Fred?" in that clip, but no Scott. Yeti, just poof. D do we know? Look at this car. Do we know the uh, right age now, of this so we'll footage? Zero in on him and see who it is. I don't know. So we'll back off. But this is our retail area. That's the door that goes into our retail area. Wow. There is our counter. There is my barbershop sign right there. If you need a haircut, this is the place to come get it. So here it is. So many memories. Goodbye. Right there. You can just see the top of her head. Maybe not. You see the computer. 
She's on the phone. She'll be out of here in a minute. And I'll show you a kind of an overview of white feather meats processing room. Right there. And that's where you I pause bone. it for a second. My so one thing that I'm noticing, um, go just a little bit more so we can see. Love, in fact, on a the couple of things are jumping out at me. Sean obviously is in the same position that he was, you know, 20 years ago. So 30 plus years doing the same thing. Wash, rinse, repeat over and over. But you'll notice that uh, no beard. So this was pre the Bearded Butchers. No logos on the wall, anything like that. But same room, same Butcher Boy B16 bandsaw. Um, yeah, just pretty much doing the same thing. Dad mentioned Sarah being in the office, our, our older sister who unfortunately passed away from cancer in 2001. So- Really difficult time in yeah, our lives. Yeah, this is, this is obviously pre-2001. Mm -hmm. So, another pan here. I'm gonna guess that it was oh, probably sure 98 through 2000, somewhere right in there. 98, 99, I'd agree. Area, bison head up here on the wall. And beside it is a bear coat with a feather, a pop machine. This is our deli area. We have several freezer meat cases, bison meat case, smoked meat. Man, so at the time we had these um, reach in freezers and if you look this was the this was the actual main part of the retail and then you turn the corner there was probably one or two more meat cases down here but i would say that the total available poundage of meat here was i mean maybe maybe five percent of what we offer oh. now it was so small. Customers would come in the front door, and if they were carrying baskets, they had to lift them up shoulder high to get past just each to other. get past each other. Yeah. So right now, our current retail store it offers about we have about twenty thousand pounds of product in front of the customer at any given time. Pork, beef. I'm standing behind the counter. We have some decoration on the wall. We have a scale. And this is the deli meat case. I'll go around the front. But I got to tell a story about that. Hold on a second. Here. So I actually, I have this spot right here on my finger where it's got this, it's missing some hide. And I never went to the doctor or anything, but I was standing behind that deli right there and I was slicing bologna for a customer and they wanted it chipped. And I remember I was like, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. So I'm back there chipping this, this, uh, bologna or whatever it was and i went all the way down to the butt end of the chub of bologna and i kept slicing and i actually just sliced the side of my finger off mm. and it was just missing the high the hide came right off and just started bleeding like crazy but i grabbed a paper towel and i held it so the customer couldn't see it and i finished their project um obviously not getting any, any blood and what was given to them but yeah so that's the story of of my yeah. forefinger it's what we rough uh, work with. Here is the door that comes out of the processing room. And here is our major freezer right here. This is where the frozen product is kept. Flower Shannon made. And as you go behind the deli, you actually enter the boxing room. This is the boxing room area. In fact, right out this window is the field. And in that field, my cabin is to the right and Sarah Nerve's house to the left. In fact, you can just maybe see some of it there. And so that is the boxing room area. This is where Scotty and Andre do all the boxing. There is also, as I walk in here, battery pack didn't go, but this is our freezer area. Again, here's the boxing area. And here is another freezer right here. This is where we store a box product for our customers. So Lot, I, lots of emotions. I, I about lived in that freezer. That freezer right there, I don't recall what size it was. That's where we kept all the boxes. So we would butcher an, you know, a beef, a pig for a, a custom butcher. So you brought your beef, you brought your pig, and we butchered it for you, packaged it. We put it in boxes. 
and then you took the boxes out to the vehicle when the customer came to pick up. I think I kept a tally one day and I took like something like 150 boxes out of the freezer, but we would process the animal, package it, put it on these wire basket carts, freeze it in the first freezer that he showed there. And then the boxing process was you took all the orders, brought them out, put the packages, for, took them from the wire basket, put them in the boxes. And then the boxes got the, the customer's name written on it. And then they went into that freezer until they came and picked them up. And we did that from the year that dad acquired the business in 1994, all the way through 2015. So that's a lot of boxes that went through that. Room. And then when they come to pick it up, it goes out. That so door. pause it for a Flat second. Dish. These, these times financially were pretty tough for us, if you remember, because we had, you can see on the ceiling there, the roof had been leaking, so we tried to fix it. Actually, that room right there, the first week that dad owned the business, remember we had that strong wind and it blew that roof, the tin on that roof back. Mm -hmm. And we never had the money to actually pro fix it properly. So we always were dealing with roof leaks and obviously, you know, being USDA inspected, that was a no-no in, in a food industry environment, but just the just a lot of emotions when you see this because not only was it and this isn't a you know woe is me, but it was it was tough. It was tough work and it was tough financially back in those days, big time. Shipping verification log that they got it. Here's Dad working outside right there. Grandpa, oh, there's Papa. Grandpa. He's working away. God he bless him. Video at him, so I got this up sideways here. So you can see him, but the door's heaved up, and uh, he is right outside of the deli area. If you remember our deli area, and he's over by the boxing room door. Now he's gone. There, there's a little bit of him, and he is trying to get that to thaw out. Hey, pop. So, hey, Grandpa, Dad. just real quick. <laughs> Grandpa was born in Jerusalem, Ohio, and that's our tie to the southern part of the state, Monroe County, Belmont County, where we still currently have property. Um, and a lot of our family is from that area. So whenever you hear us talking about going, going down home, it truly is going down home because that's where Grandpa was born. Hi, Scott, you don't have to duck down. And Are we going to get a glimpse of you? I don't know. It looks like I'm hiding from the camera. Area, our slaughter floor area. So the I mentioned this. There's the... Into the knocking box. Oh, it's right there. Cleaver. That um, cleaver right there, we used to um, slaughter ostrich. The owners, whoever was custom slaughter, they wanted the, the big toenail. And I used to have to take like the leg of the ostrich after it was, you know, removed and lay it out and take and chop the toenail off with that thing is the knocking box right here and the animals are brought into here we're going to actually get some live footage here from one of the family they're lifted up on that hoist and they are bled out into a barrel and they're laid down on these skinning carts and they are skinned out and they go from there and they hook up to that gambles right there Still in the same that's room. That's my station. Still the same gambles. And gambles is operated same by saw. a hoist up here. Same hooks, everything. And that's the hoist that operates it. And these rollers are put up to hang the beef sides on. And this is our kill floor. Head meat inspection here. And uh, we're going to actually take some video of us uh, slaughtering some of these animals in oh, here. Boy. We have off to the right in an edible room, which I don't have enough cord to get into. But this is where all the product is washed, where the entrails are separated. Is he charging the batteries he's walking right around? I have no idea. And we're going to get a chance tomorrow he's, he's to see all of that. And as I spin around, and I'll try and go a little slower, I'm standing in a little alcove where the inspectors hang their aprons and they hang their knives, and so do we. And this is the, one of the cooler doors and our locker area right here. And I'll see if I can get up to... This locker area. I can hear the saw. I'll show you a little more of can this. You hear it? Yep. Buzzing away. I'm jigging a little bit because I'm going to grab the battery pack here, so I don't knock it down. But this is our locker room area. Inspector's office up those steps. That I think. With the inspector's area up those steps. These are the lockers where we keep our equipment, and this is the locker room. Smokehouse is out that door. Nice sharpener, buggies, miscellaneous storage. This is a beef cooler where we hang beef, and I'll get a picture of that here eventually for you too. Signing off.
I'm in the locker room. There I am. Is, this is the kill floor. Oh. Lockers, men's bathroom, stairs that go up to the inspector's office, out to the smokehouse, and here is Scotty. Say hello, Scotty. How you doing? Here. Let me see. How you doing there, buddy? How you doing? All right. Scotty's going to open up the cooler door, and he's going to show us inside the cooler. No there beer. You go. No These beer. These are the coolers. And long range shot will kind of show you that cooler is filled with beef and that cooler runs clear to the back of that wall plus out onto the kill floor open the door again scott i wasn't quite finished and it is a rather large cooler but there is the beef you can see how they hang oh leave it open scott you're hard on me here <laughs> it hangs by that those hooks you those hooks you saw out on the kill floor and that is a beef carcass those are barrels that we store our hams and bacons in so scotty thank you dad very much yes dad never sits in that chair i hear you I'm thank you out. very just much like brady. thank you very you much think so yeah there's a white door uh, so i'll show you real quick here this was before one of my, my i had a second surgery because i had my uh work in the kill floor i had my teeth busted out and my lip right here had um like permanent scar tissue so i had my lips split open from like from my nostril down mm. and i'll never forget all my that day. teeth busted out of the front now those were replaced with the fake teeth i still have then i had another surgery to get that scar tissue out of there so my lips not a permanent fat lip. he just came walking into the slaughter floor and his lip was just Thank you Dad's very much. Hanging down in a piece. Yes. Dad never sits in a oh. chair. I hear you. I'm thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. There's a white door. So that is one of the cooler doors. And that other cooler door opens up onto the processing floor, which we filmed first. So that's it. Processing floor again. And there's the office girl. Stacy, say Stacey. hello. Hey, say hello. Look She's over here. She's still doing the same thing. There you go. How you doing? You're, no, you're in the office. <laughs> And she works over at this table right there. So we missed her in the processing. There's Sean. I'll show you. He dumps the burger by the lug full, and then Sean grinds it out. Can you tell he's, yeah, he doesn't he like being on camera? camera. He loved the camera here, as much then as he does meat, now. But I'm having such a great time. I just want to catch everybody on film. Uh, you. you should go up to the fire department sometime. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I, you don't need me on there. Yeah, that's all right. Tomorrow you can get us on the kill floor. That's what I want to see. Thank you. We're in the boxing room again, just to give you the right focus of where it's at. This is the processing floor door. Uh, there was the back of the deli. I'm in the boxing room, and Dad is chipping away. There's the old meat truck. There's the old square body. The frozen ice out my there. First kind truck. of wanted to get close-up shot of Pop while he's working. He's walking away from me again. This is a view out the front, the meat truck. Now I'm kind of shaking quite a bit. There he is. Wonderful man. God bless him. He works so hard. He's such a wonderful influence in my life. Let's move over here to the window. Kind of dirty, but we'll I live agree. with it. So got there's one of those Pop, vintage ball caps on. In front of. I wish I could find it. The deli area. This is our deli area. Uh, this is the bison meat case and there is a multitude of bison product in there you see the ground bison and wow, the rest of the product. I remember that's old i remember that pepsi machine i think i i convinced dad that we were going to be able to make money with it was it. a good idea and then but we it was just really it was money really from the cash register it was really just to be able to drink some pop pork bratwurst we have six incredible beer to butcher flavors we have southern peach tailgater jalapeno cheddar classic original mushroom and swiss that's 48 total brats you can get them in a variety pack where you get two packs of each flavor or you can get a single flavor pack of 12. a great way to set yourself up for summer grilling feed anywhere from 25 to 40 people or 48 people depending on how hungry they are find them right now at beardedbutchers.com I think Brown I bison. spotted and the rest of the see that right there. Yep. It's actually down here in the corner. That's the box. There it is. That Dad had made right here in front of me. Cool vintage box. Now we have 
our beer butcher blend seasonings in a similar box it's kind of where we get some of that Product. stuff from so that is the bison case this is the deli case and then again here is the decoration and beef and pork case it's like Somebody there was just came through that door oven mint see who there but for this customers is the to deli use. Case. Right here, Mom has a nice smile sign there. Why is the deli empty? And this is the various. I think it stopped working. No, oh, there's got cheese in it. In I there. remember Dad would walk in. Why is the deli and empty? Painting. Oh, you mean here. there's no meat in there? Yeah. Okay. Collection. A couple of bison signs, and there is the cabin outside. That cabin's actually where we did that deer breakdown video. One of our yep. early YouTube videos was inside that cabin. And Sarah and Irv's home outside. So wow. that is the deli area. This is mom's decorating. She has shelves full of knickknacks. There's the sausage stuffer right there. So it's kind of a neat little Along deli area. Shelf. Yeah. Again, I'll just pan around and show you the deli. It looks when you walk in the front door. Yeah, it's spent a lot of time register. out there in that retail counter yeah um, doors that lead into the processing room it's kind of a glare on there so i'm not sure people say that we'll we ramble there. on i know i think we get <laughs> it on us he's cell barn. pretty long-winded but this is the processing floor earlier this is where sean was standing boning That's cool. sean's in there actually cleaning right now but we probably so have enough glare that in there reflection that reflection right there in the window this is where we're sitting now we're literally sitting where this building used to be in our uh, new this HQ. eventually, yeah, this is this property became our because headquarters. of the sale barn. But this is the processing floor. Earlier, this is where Sean was standing boning. Sean's in there actually cleaning right now. But we probably have enough glare in there we can't see a whole lot. But I thought I'd just stand down through here and just kind of show you. There's a my earliest memory ever of our meat shop was looking through this window at probably six, seven, eight years old because I remember coming through Creston with dad going across railroad tracks. He was bringing cows to the auction barn and the slaughter plant. Dairy cows. And we went in there when it was the previous owner and I remember standing there looking through that window and seeing that in the back when I was Never, never knew that I would one day we would one be, one day be working back Mall there. Small cabin that Seth built. Uh, this is the retail area from this side. So I was standing previously, right there by the pork case. So we have Stolzfus jams and jellies, and chicken and various products. So this is the inside of the deli area. We sure made and use out of what we had, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Mom taking cutting instructions. Somebody wanting a gazillion different things off of a quarter of beef. Mm -hmm. She's explaining to them that they can't do that. It's a pig. Scott, get the other one. No. Scott, get pause it, pause it for the a maintenance second. Maintenance man for white feather oh, beach right oh. here. Stop. I remember sitting in that office and dad had, the first thing he did when he bought the business is he had, what, three lines put in? So Never wanted you to call and get a busy signal. Yep. So you'd be sitting in that office and you'd be taking cutting instructions with the person next to you. And it was so confusing because you couldn't, you couldn't even think because they're taking cutting instructions, you're taking cutting instructions. But yeah, it's... First thing dad did, three lines, no busy signals. Here's grandpa, got the vintage white feather meats ball cap going. On Perkins, say hello, Donald. <laughs> Pop does all Man, the maintenance what in a here. Guy. All he of this plant material guy. in here, he's responsible for it. that right, Pop? Yeah, he works on everything in there. So how old would he have been? Now I'll show you what a cooler looks like after kill day. In that. And in the cooler. Oh my goodness. This is what the cooler looks like. Look, at, Look that. at that. She's packed. On kill day, when I showed it the other day, we didn't have a whole lot in here, but these are the carcasses and lots of them. And uh, this is just generally how it looks after a kill day. And uh, here's a whole row of carcasses packed that are down there. along here. So that'll give you a pretty good idea of uh, how cool these coolers get uh, on kill day. Like I said. 
this is uh, I don't push a magnet in the wall, that's all right. Uh, there's our cooler system that works up here. And uh, that's the cooler. These are also some hogs in the back that we processed. And we also have another cooler, which I can't get into. But there's another cooler on the back wall, this wall right here. I remember we used to pack these so full that you would literally have to get on your hands and knees and crawl if you needed to get into the interior. I remember- We literally had to work our way in. I remember uh, dad on kill day, he, he wouldn't take any breaks. No. So we would always start the slaughter at 4 a.m. And we would work till 4 p.m., 12 hours solid without a break. No lunch, no nothing. And finally the USDA inspection came to dad and said, well, we're gonna have to do mandatory breaks because our inspectors can't be on the floor uh, that long. But yeah, we would go from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. straight through, just kept rolling. Has another cooler, same size, back on the other side of this right here. So we have double this amount of cattle in here. Goodbye. 2005, so All this right, is skip so forward. jumped ahead. Probably a seven, eight year jump. So you, who's behind the camera now? That was probably, dad before. Probably, probably. All right, what he's gonna do here is gonna break That's it down. That's you, The count up from the bottom rib, between the fifth and sixth rib. So what's this? Nineteen and a half years ago, doing a video. I now that now that I I remember our dad wanted us to do like a how to for somebody, mm -hmm. a friend of his. So Fair we did a how to. Gonna break it down. To be our very first ever Between how the last to. Two ribs to find the to find the last the twelfth and thirteenth rib there. There he is again between the fifth and sixth rib. Go up. Nice beef. Man, still doing the same thing, aren't we? Now the front quarter is broke away from the hind quarter. There's the front quarter. And there's your hind quarter. So I notice I have a scar right here on my hand. And if you look in that video, you can see I have the gauze over top of my hand because I don't know, the week prior, I slipped with my knife and put a big gash right across the bottom, the base of my thumb. But you'll see the Band-Aid in there. Oh, there see it is. It? Yeah. Le that left hand. I remember like two weeks after this, uh, dad and I went somewhere and I remember my hand hurt so bad and it was all swollen and I was just, I kept just pushing on it, pushing on it. Finally, it just like pus shot out of all the stitches and just, it was oh, oh so, so you had stitches yeah and here is broke it was down so bad in the fifth and sixth rib there's the tuck section this is the rib section here something interesting right there you want to know what it is you just cut through the skirt stake right through the skirt stake this was in 2005 and we didn't start saving those those value added products until after this. So you can see that skirt stake went right into ground beef. Moving the plate. Nobody knew what it was. Rib sections removed from the, from the rib. Got a little narrow on that rib section there, buddy. Yeah. Didn't leave much of a tail. Turn off the back of the rib section. Trim in a little no. of that excess fat off there so I didn't have to do it later. No chain guard, I can see that. Nope. I'd be surprised if we even saved the brisket back then. People didn't want them. Yep. Right onto the boning table with that brisket. Cut some arm rows. These are arm rows. Up the end of the chuck. Now these will be 
tough road. So this was before the cutting style sort of changed. So I would have I would have been cutting bone in chuck roast right here. But yeah, square chuck roast, no yep. flat irons. Yep. No boneless no chuck, chuck eye steaks. There again, people didn't know what they were. It is a nice beef. I wonder whose it was. Yeah. Placed over the bone table. There he is. All by himself. This shank here is going to cut some short ribs. Cut some soup bones. Short ribs just cut cross cut out of the shank. Trimming up the truck road. Wow. Check out the blade. Toronox. It's like a six inch rosewood handle of a Toronox. Yep. We probably sold that because we took all of our old used knives and put them online. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I requested the ones with the notches and the handles to not sell. But right. Maybe somebody got one. There it is. Yep. So when we say I've been using this knife for 20, 30 years. Proof. Proof. Can you just feel it like it was yesterday? Yeah. Wow. I just keep Crap thinking about the road amount road. of work. Just seeing Bowling that full table. cooler and then thinking about just every Bowling day. Table. Just Well, yeah, on any given day, oh. this was, uh, we typically were trying to get four carcasses. Sometimes, one five. Sometimes five done a day, and this would just be mm -hmm. one half. So you would do eight to ten of these. So eight to 10 piles of these three days a week on beef because we had a slaughter day in there and we had a pig day in there. So Monday, Tuesday, Friday, we cut the beef. So uh, 12, 15, sometimes 20 cattle. And minimal help because we couldn't get anybody to uh, work. Well, there's and that. we didn't and have our kids yet, so. I think too, one of the things that is still relevant today is we have this um, sort of pressure to get the work completed and so like with the camera we even here where you can see like sean's working by himself i'm on the camera so like the camera itself kind of impedes the smooth progress and we mm -hmm. still find this when we do youtube now it's it's still hard for us to like get over that feeling of like we got to get this done and when we get a camera out it's just like because that's in it just slows just everything in, down ingrained in us mm -hmm. that we have to get this process as quickly as possible here all the excess off the fat or off the ropes and steaks thrown over here some of it's trimmed into stew meat excess fat and bone is removed it goes into tubs here where it is then ground but think about that there's sean i know we give him a lot of heck for sometimes not wanting to be on camera and stuff like that but Think about him being on that corner of that boning table with that pile in front of him, knowing that he has to accomplish boning that all out by himself. So like that, that'll, that'll wear on you. Over and over, over and, and over, over hundreds over. of pounds. Yep, every same day. Same repetitive type mm -hmm. work. Getting trimmed so we can cut rib steaks out of it. Bone is removed from the back. Flipped over, cap is removed. I do recognize a few things that I that I do differently now, just like that removing that cap off that ribeye. I did it backwards from the way I do it now. Really, I'm not sure why I changed or when I changed, but yeah. That's back before. What is it? AMSR was even a thing. ASMR. ASMR. So just some quick math. If we did an average of just taking using the cattle, if we did a 20 year span and let's just say, you know, maybe we had some kill weeks that were around holidays, we didn't slaughter, but let's just say we did 45 slaughter days in a, in a given year. And let's say that our average was 14 cattle. Let's just use uh, 630, 630 cattle a year over that 20 years. That's uh, 12,600 cattle that, and that's, that's, those are very conservative numbers. Mm -hmm. So like on the very low end of the spectrum that you would have done to date now, 
25,000 of the of this product right here. Just just this rib section, you would have done this 25,000 wow. times just using simple conservative math. That's what that's why muscle memory takes over. A lot of people want to know how long, you know, how long have you been a butcher? How long did it take to learn all this stuff, you know, the talent and everything? It's like, well, right here this is this is it i just think it's remarkable because right now today the next rib section that you do uh is going to be somewhere in, in in you know nobody really knows the the true number but it's going to be somewhere in the at the very low end the you know twenty five thousand one hundred and thirty seventh rib section or it could be in the high end the 33rd you know 333rd you know, 33,175th rib add section. In, add in bison and elk and everything else. Exactly. I mean, just this piece alone in the tens of thousands of times that this process has been repeated. Trimmed and ready to cut steaks. Same knife. Bone in rib steak. Where they end up. Make sure I get it for the right thickness for the customer. I remember I, I cut some steaks once for a, a guy and he requested them to be like five eighths of an inch thick. And apparently I didn't have my guide set properly and they ended up being like three quarters of an inch thick. And I remember him coming in the front door of our store and pounding his fist on the counter and he was pointing at me and said, I thought I told you five eighths. So that's, we. Along with all of the workload and the stress, we were dealing with that too, yeah. trying to keep people happy. I think it's interesting too that this was mostly a bone-in cut. Everything we didn't do a lot mostly, of boneless. Now it's mostly boneless. Yep. Such a great looking beef. Yeah. Easy there, watch pal. That, watch them fingies, Easy buddy. There, Look pal. at that. That, right. makes, that makes me nervous just, just watching that. I shouldn't have been doing stuff like that. No. So we are peeling the flank out of the hind. Fast forward 19 years, and that, that flank steak video that we did right there is our number one viewed video flank, ever. Flank like removed. 100 and some million views, probably more. A couple hundred million. Just peeling the round tip. Didn't save tri tips back then. Here, right, that knuckle. Or flanks. The nope. along the Nobody wanted them. Round bone. Straight out, just like that. What do you think would happen if I went back to a goatee? Cut the knuckle off the end. To try it? You just yeah. look Peel that age off. again. What doing here is peel this kidney soot away from the loin. Easy on that tenderloin, buddy. It's important not to get into the filet. You know what we should do? We should react to other people's work now. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Mm -hmm. Pull up other people's work right and react side. to it? When doing so. Certainly have plenty of people that react to ours. Oh, yeah. Everybody's an expert. Very nice, clean. Especially on the internet. Get that butcher's Rest dollar, buddy. Top of the loin <clears throat> moves down the porterhouse. Finally, T-bone. There again, I bet you I cut those right, in bone in sirloins oh, and porterhouse and T-bone. For certain, I'm not even mentioning strip yeah. strip and fillet. There's no Thor's hammers. Never, yeah, never. Or a caveman. Yep. There it goes. Square up the end of the sirloin here. Bone in sirloin. Over. Big, massive steak. Who's eating that thing? It's like for a family of three. Well, that's all the sirloin steaks. Once you get down to the end of the, the end of the bone here, bone here, that's your last sirloin steak. Trim off the excess tail off the loin. Actually, it should be four house and two bones. Square up the end of the 
line. I used to be quarter ounce steak. People would always call in and say, why didn't I get my filet and strip? Not even realizing that they're right there right. in your porterhouse steak. Those are pretty thin. Somebody obviously requested three quarters of an inch. Nice splitting job, whoever did that. Would have been dad. Yeah. Right there at the end of your filet. I wonder what camera you use. It's pretty good footage, really, from 19 years ago. Cutting bison today. We get a lot of questions about the knives that we use. Right now, I'm using an 8-inch Victorinox. Also have the 10-inch Victorinox. These are our breaking knives and our what we typically use for our steak cutting knives. Both available now with our bearded Butcher Blend logo stamped right into the blade. If you want a knife, go get one. Yeah, that's what mom said. It'll be oh, fun. Oh, Shannon. New footage. New footage. Oh, Seth hamming it up for the camera. I'm, I'm Same character. I'm secretly so I can go start my own meat shop. Uh-oh, so, Shannon. Oh, there's Dad. Dad. Oh, he's doing the same thing that he's <laughs> get, doing the same thing that you were doing. Get it on us. John F. Martin's what? I just got a picture of your rear end. You bent Best over. You ever got. Right. Deer hunting, so. Talking about deer hunting. Oh, there, there I is. am. And then you can go deer hunting. What are you doing, Spencer? Oh. Hey, that's me. What? There he what, is. What are? What is bro doing? Hey. There's Grandpa. Hey. Who, who, who are you gonna call? Oh, look how cute. Man, what happened? Notice how I was already uh, using the technology. Messing here. around. Yep. He wants to know how to turn that into a microphone. Hey. Can you put that back up there? Put that back up there before I give you a whipping. Oh, oh Grandpa. <laughs> put that up there before I give you a whipping. You turn look. the juice off, Pop? Spencer. He just asked him if he turned that? the electric off. Spencer didn't talk for the first five years he of his said life. Maha. <laughs> is that Spencer? I still don't talk. That's why I'm behind the camera. Is that, yeah. is that Dad? Is that Seth? He had to have been Did about two and a half or three. Who is that? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Spencer. I, I feel like you need to you need to get up by your chair and come over here for a second. You got to come over here. Got We got to get him. Got to get this the, side by side. We got to get him behind the camera. There he is. There he is. Spencer, right here, the man, the myth, the legend, the little guy. Yep. To hey. the big guy. High five for all the great work. We had garbage truck Dave. He said he wanted to watch it. And <laughs> he wants to watch bus driver Dave. There he is. That was back when you were a thick boy. Big boy. Thick son. Look at that. Deadlifting, eating the beef, hitting the bench, taking the creatine. I had to make sure my sons see this so they when they think that they're that they're uh they're big guys now at 16 and 14. Mm -hmm. Why weren't you wearing a hat? It was hot. I You're think we were doing, to wear a hat. We're doing custom beef, so we weren't, inspe weren't inspected on this one. There's a, a piece of junk there's beef. There's a flank. So we were always at the mercy of the farmer when it came to bringing these animals in. We never knew what we would get. But they always expected excellence in return. Got to follow through there. And that's how you nice, nice technique, Scott. There's the vintage white oh, feather nice shirt. Technique. <laughs> Actually, I'm making an instructional video. Oh, that's something I'm supposed to do. Really? Yeah. For what? For Shannon, me? cutting. Shannon yeah, giving away our secrets. Well, I threw oh, that I flank. Supposed, I thought you were not supposed to make instructional oh. video. I threw that flank from the boning table over onto the packing table. Yeah, that's a no-no. I'm not sure you were able to grow a beard yet then. I don't think so. 
<laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Pretend even, pretending you're cut your fingers off. I shouldn't even be joking. What a crappy beast. Yeah. Piece of junk. I have a feeling I know whose that was, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> right. Oh, back to the cutting instructions. She's at it again. We're making out a bill. Yep. She's grinning. <laughs> Oh, I follow Scott. Scott's taking the finished product in the freezer. Probably gonna slam the doors in my face. I'm experiencing this. They follow me around the cameras all the time. Oh, do they? <laughs> Here, the paparazzi, huh? Oh, that Ooh. freezer. freezer, what a nightmare. So, pause it for just one second. That freezer we had so many problems with it because the condensation actually froze down into the ground and it heaved the floor. So we had to go in and tear the floor out of that freezer and get a jackhammer and jackhammer the dirt out. And it would condensate and drip and then freeze and inspectors would walk in and they'd write us up for it. But yeah, oh. Get another one. Here's Sean. We're uh, wearing a Perkins Sun Concrete t-shirt. Why isn't he wearing an apron? Or gloves. You guys are like rebels. Hey, he smiled. I follow you everywhere. See that dust? This is what Sean is doing Friday evening. I remember that. We were <laughs> at Skyway. I, I told him I follow him wherever he goes. Wow. Little family well, leisure. Decided to do. Hey, boy. Smokey. Come oh, here, boy. Come Dad's here, boy. wolf. We had a pet wolf. Smokey, look here, boy. That wolf chewed on my leg one time. Hey, Smokey, aren't you Poison Ivy and a pet wolf. <laughs> All in the same <laughs> footage. <laughs> Absolutely boy. crazy boy, we were. Oh, boy. Here we go. Get ready for the hollering. Dad always got so worked up with these animals. He just start hollering. So Sean's wearing the exact same outfit. I think this is the same day. Same day that we were processing, we went out to move bison. Well, it looks like Grandpa's, Grandpa's got, got some, some, I don't know, some warmer. sort of medical thing for the bison. Dad still wears the bibs. So the interesting thing is, is if you watch the Cumbrackers movie back, we were doing the same thing. Yeah. Ten years prior to this. Who's that? I Who's the you. gal? I, Go ahead, yeah. I don't know who I that is. I follow you everywhere. That girlfriend you had? No. I don't recognize that person. No. Must have been worming calves. Yep. Yeah, you can be careful. There he goes. This is what Sean does on Saturday mornings. Working on a Every Saturday. Every Saturday morning, we'd go in and Sean's box meat. Sean's going to be glad when I leave my video. So I'm counting the order, making sure that everything is accounted for. Sean's... and. Sean's putting in a box, Seth's band in the boxes. We did this hundreds and oh. thousands of boxes. Every Well, we would have to go in and do it every morning before we process so that we would empty out the buggies we could put more meat on. So it looks like on Saturday morning we were doing Friday's work. Mm -hmm. camera. Sean's wearing a pager. Scott says he's doing all the work. There's Sarah. There's Sarah. This is Sarah. Packing up liver. That was when she was sick. Yep. And Sarah is cutting livers. 
she's good at it. She's had lots of practice. Definitely miss her. She went through a rough time, man. Yep. Pan over so you can see what Stacy's doing. There she is. She's packing. Trail belonging. Now mom's behind the camera. Yeah. That must have been she during deer doing season. Smoke stuff. <laughs> She's always Stacy sticking. likes to stick her tongue out the camera. This, th that scale, that, this is, this footage is older. old. Yeah, this yeah. is older than 05. Yeah, now I've got we to went go back. fix the breakfast, so see you later. Hi, Grandpa. Oh, aw. Sean and Laura's. <laughs> Boy, doesn't Dad look just like Grandpa? Yeah. What do you think you're going to look like? I know, I'm headed there. What do you That's eating, okay, Grandpa? he's a good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Camera. Grandpa always said, no fool, no fun. Mm -hmm. Now Stacy's behind the camera. Mom. <laughs> oh. Oh, Sarah's sticking her tongue out. Aw. Mm. I did the same thing to Sarah. Trying to figure oh, out what music's funny. playing in the background. Is that oh, it? That's is that it? Clip. Man. That's it for I'm today. I'm disappointed it's over. Now, hey, you do have a slaughter floor clip. Can you, can we show just a, just a little bit of it? Uh, you and can then show that'll lead up want. into doing another one of these, but with that footage? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. How, how, how long is the slaughter floor I don't actually footage? know. Let's see how long it is. Oh, it's 22 minutes. Oh wow. oh, wow. So here's what I think we should do. Can you pause it for a second? Do you want to wait to do this one? And we'll do this again? I do. But with this Let footage, me just we'll flip react through to here this. real fast. Yeah, just, just. Wow. wow. There's dad. We're still doing the same thing. Well, we don't want to give it away. Yeah, let's just wait. Yeah, let's wrap it okay. up for today. Um, how long? How long we in, Spencer? About an hour. Yeah. We're an hour in. That's. I think that's plenty for today. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. Um, so we'll, we'll talk all day if you let us. That was crazy. Man. I mean, looking back, a lot of similarities, a lot of changes. Obviously, the store is much larger. Reminiscing about the fact that you know our sister's gone, mm -hmm. our grandpa's gone. You know, our dad doesn't work any more. Um, you know, longer. Our mom doesn't work any longer. But everything else. The, you know, Stacy's there, Sean's there, the the kids. I was gonna say, think about that, all the all the, all the people that are added yeah. on. Uh, Man. The family additions, the employee additions, just showcases like a ton of growth that Absolutely. we've seen. Uh wow. Just thinking about all that work that basically went into all the mundane, unseen well, uh n you know no hero work there to for your sure. to your point people you know they 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 might see what they think is an overnight success story with the beard of butcher brand and youtube and the media and all that stuff but as you can see here it's it's been a i mean it's been a long road yeah and, and uh, but here just real quick but the interesting thing is for a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of success stories, that's what you hear over and over again. People with grit and determination and they don't give up and had it had it hard, you know, absolutely broke for so many years. And then but we never want to forget, you know, where we came from because this is this is what we're grounded in and this is this is where our brand was founded right here. Yeah, and to that point I think that sometimes our footage that's getting uh that's released online now we get a lot of comments from people that are in industry that were like, oh my goodness, how long did that take you? You have 10 people on that floor and you know, you only do two cows. And the thing of it is, if you would have flipped the you know, pages back, it used to be the other way around. Mm -hmm. We used to have two people and have to get 10 cows done. So a lot's changed in that regard. We still have uh, quite a bit of output with regard to the production that we're still involved we have, in. And we have so much more going on. We with have the, with your brand. I way mean, just, more going yeah. on 
to, to that's outside of actually cutting the meat. But if you look at the body of our pro, um, production work, mm -hmm. it was over like a 20, 25 year period that we just saw that had uh, resulted in literally tens of thousands of animals. Like if we use the low end numbers on the cattle and we figured out that we did 12,000, 13,000 over that, over that chunk, which there's still some that we did before that. And there's still some we're doing now lower numbers, but let's just rough numbers. Let's say we we've butchered, uh, you know, 15,000 cows, just adding in the retail and, and whatnot that we've done outside of the custom work. And then for hogs, since we always did more hogs than we did beef, it's got to be over 20,000, maybe 25. Then you add in the bison and the lamb and, and the ostrich the deer. and the elk and the deer. Yeah. Easily in the 50, like we've butchered 50,000 animals mm -hmm. over the course of our career. And when we say that we butchered them, we've literally been responsible for the the livestock, you know, taking them in as livestock and turning them into a packaged, ready to tear open and prepare product. Consume. Feed in America. We've been doing it for a long time. And other, lots of others have yeah. too. And, you know, those stories don't see the light, but I'm thankful for this footage Whoa. that it shows some of that history. This being the 30th year since our folks bought the shop, they bought the shop in June um, of 1994. Now, uh, now it's July of 2024. Mm -hmm. So there's there's 30 years that we've actually owned the shop. What you said something about other folks out there. What would be interesting is if some folks comment on this video about similar stories in the industry because. We're, I, we're not the only ones. It was it was this way. What you saw right here was this way for a lot of people. And it's still this way for a lot it, of people. It is. I think there's we a talk to them. remarkable feature, though, where it's, if you look at our comments, I did this in the 70s, mm -hmm. I did this in the 80s, I did this in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a, a break in the chain. <clears throat> and well, that's why we we're wanna, seeing a resurgence. That's why we want to talk to Mike Rowe about the trade. Yeah, for sure. Because there's been a break mm -hmm. in the chain, and we have a very concentrated pool of people with the skill set mm -hmm. now it's coming back based on the you know the stuff that that happened with the supply chain during covid and people want to know where their meat comes from and that it, there's been a resurgence in the small butcher shops but it's it's you know, hopefully it's not too little too late. You want to know what concerns me is those people that comment and say that they did this in the 60s and 70s and 80s, how the, their body's broken. Yeah. And how they're, you know, they have our arthritis and they can't walk anymore because you can see that's all just movement and your hip movement and everything. Uh, a lot, a lot of, you know, issues with your hands and your fingers, but. Well, that's um, why, you know, we try not to let the old man in and we, you know, Seth and I in particular eat a low, you know, low inflammatory or anti-inflammatory diet, mostly mm -hmm. mostly meat, stay away from sugar, dairy products as much as we can, alcohol, that sort of thing. Because- And working if, out all the time. If we don't, all those repetitive motions, mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna get that inflammation in your body. It's gonna lead to arthritis, carpal tunnel, that sort of thing. So that's why we try to stay healthy now is just to kind of keep the old man, like I said, don't let the old man in, keep it at bay. Because Beating him back. Those miles are on mm -hmm. the vehicle. That's right. Yeah, they we're are not getting on any the younger. But what's exciting is the you mentioned the kids, and now we're able to, you know, apprenticeship them. They're they're in the industry. They're learning uh, onto that next generation. So the future is looking bright. That's, I mean, I'm, and and then the the, the other folks involved in our brand too. Mm -hmm. um, it just we have so many great people that are working for us. They're working alongside us. They're working alongside our family. Uh, it's just a, it's a great place to be. We're, we're proud of it, and hopefully you guys are too. That is correct. Uh, so hope you yeah. enjoyed watching some of this historical footage, our reaction to it, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time right here on TBB. For the slaughter footage, stay tuned because that's going to be coming down the road.